Good morning, Fountain family. It's so good to be together this morning. Why don't we stand wherever we are? Let's lift our voice. Let's clap our hands. Let's celebrate the goodness of God today. He is worthy of all the praise. So lift your voice with us. Come on. Sing this with me. Come on. They're higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. One thing remain, this one thing remain. For your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. For your love never fails and never gives up, and never runs out on me. For your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love is constant. We sing this together. And on and on and on and on it goes. For it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never. Fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me oh your love never fails your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Oh, we give you praise today. But he brought me in all oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who oh, the sun sets free Who oh, is free and deep I'm a child of God Yes, I am Free last year Ransomed me, his grace ran and stayed. While I 
Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, home is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, in my Father's house. Treasures 
Good morning, church family. At this time, I'd love to read a scripture with you. We're going to be reading 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12. If you have a device or a tablet or a good old-fashioned Bible, I would encourage you to open it uh, right now. And if you have none of those things, right at the bottom of this uh, screen will be the scripture for you. Again, let's read together 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. And now we're going to skip over to verse 25, and let's read this together. It says, This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Man, we are all a part of the body of Christ, and we all have a job to do. I want to pray for you at this time, and... Uh, just pray a prayer blessing over your lives. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing for each person watching this morning, Lord God, that we are reminded of this truth, that we are a part of the body of Christ. Uh, we are all members and we all mean something and have a job to do. Lord, let us do with what you want us to do with what you've given to us, Lord. We thank you for that. And we pray all these things in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hello, Fountain family and friends. Uh, you know, Pastor Ruben, there's more than just the Fountain family watching. Yeah, we that's right. We have discovered we have friends all over the United States yep. who are tuning in and watching our services online. Yeah, for How sure. How incredible is that? So we're so glad that you've joined us today, and we want to welcome you to this next online service. Uh, we know that the message is going to be a blessing to you in just a few minutes. But before we go there, we want to give you a few ways that people can stay connected. And absolutely. who better than our Connections Pastor, Pastor Ruben. So why don't you share a few ways? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, if you are watching for the very first time, thank you so much for, yes. for joining in. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We're so very glad that you're here. Uh, what we want to do is just connect with you a little bit more. Um, so if we can uh, just have you go to our website, flcnj.org, what you can do is click on the tab right there that says, I'm new. Okay. And there's just a little connect card right there for us. Um, um, so that we can just connect with you a little bit better. Um, we'll have one of the pastors reach out to you uh, throughout the week and just thank you so much for joining in uh, with us in this service. In addition to that, what you can do is uh, follow us on all the social media platforms. We're all major social media platforms. And then more than any of that, what we'd love for you to do is download our app. Whether you have an yes. Android or an Apple, whatever it is, we would love for you to download that app. That's how you can um, stay connected with any events that we may be having. Um, you can have some of those uh, messages that we have uh, from the, our Sundays to be able to listen to those on demand. In addition to that, you can give via the app okay. and you can even read the Bible uh, via the same app. So we would love for you to download that app with us, whether you're on Google, whether you're on Apple, whatever it is, that's all available for you. During this COVID-19, there has never been a more important time for the church really to stay connected. Yeah, for sure. So thank you for sharing that. What we're really excited about is we're getting ready to launch our life groups. 
you, if you've listened for the past couple of weeks, you know that the Lord put a number on my heart, and that's to have 100 life group leaders. And I got to tell you, we're, we're, we're close to the miracle. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, right now, we're at about 91, yep. I think. And yep. so it's just been incredible. Thank you for so many of you who have responded to be a gatherer yeah. uh, of people in a life group. And so we have uh, so many life groups are going to get launched, I think, next week. Yeah. Next yeah. week, the week of Mother's Day, May the 10th. Yep. Um, but Pastor Ruben, let people know, because not only have we needed life group leaders, but now we want to share with you how to get connected in those life groups. Absolutely. And what I would love to say is that it's not just about the fact that we get 100 life groups. That's not really what it's about. What we want to be able to do is to give you 100 different ways to be connected with other people. Exactly. And that's really what, what, why we're trying to provide this kind of thing, because we were meant to be in community. Amen. And, yeah. and that's what, what our life groups are all about. It's not just for us to have a number. It's not just for us to be able to, to take over the internet or anything like that that. What it is, is that we want you to be able to grow in your faith. And that's what life groups are all about. And so starting this Wednesday, what you'll be able to do starting this Wednesday around noon, yes. what you'll be able yes. to do is sign up for any of the groups that we have, any of the hundred groups that we have. We want to let you know that we have a bunch of groups that are going to be following along with our, uh, uh, our sermon series that we're doing. The IM statements. The IM statements right, that we're right. really excited for. And in addition to that, we have a bunch of groups um, that are going to be going over some different material as well. Um, so we have material that's uh, Lisa Turkhurst. We have some material that's um, from AHA with Kyle Eidelman is one of those titles. Um, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt by Jensen Franklin. Just all of this incredible stuff that we want you to be able to join in on. A lot of different subjects. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's, again, it's about us being able to help you grow in your faith. That's exactly. what we're here to do. Exactly. Um, as pastors, that's what we're called to do, to, to help you and encourage you in your faith. And so starting this Wednesday at noon, what you can do is be able to go to our website. Again, that's flcnj.org. You'll be able to jump into any of those groups that we have. You'll see a little tab right there. It says groups. You can check all of those out and be able to be a part of this, this growing community and growing in your own faith as well. All of them are going to be virtual. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all online Zoom groups. That's right. Maybe instead of live groups, we should say Anyway. Um, but we're really excited about it. And next Sunday, we start the I Am Statements. Yeah. It, it's going to be an incredible series, the I Am Statements of Jesus. That's right. um, and so we welcome you to be a part of that. Please get connected. Uh, before we go to the message, we just want to give you an opportunity to give. As I was walking over here to the lobby, get ready to, to video this, I was thinking that worship is giving and giving is worship. Hmm. Think about that. Giving is an act of worship and worship is giving. Yeah, uh, worship is bigger than the songs we just got done singing. Yeah, and sometimes sure. we think worship is singing and it is, yeah. but it's so, much more than, it's so much more than just singing. Um, it's living a life that pleases the Lord and giving is a part of worship. Yeah. We're gonna give you an opportunity now to just worship the Lord. And I'm going to have Pastor Ruben let you know a couple of different ways you can give, and then those will come up on your screen. And while you're waiting for the message, what better time than to either write a check and yeah. get the envelope ready or yeah. to go on our app or our website and, uh, and give and let it be a part of your worship today. Yeah, so what are absolutely. some ways they can give? You can always mail in the check um, to the church office that's on the bottom part of your screen. You can give via our app like we were talking about earlier. You can text to give. That number is also on your screen. And in addition to that, you can uh, always be able to use flcnj.org, our website, and be able to give uh, that way as well. Could I just say thank you for your faithfulness in giving? I yeah. might sound like a broken record, but I don't care. <laughs> um, we're incredibly grateful, incredibly yeah. grateful for the gifts that are coming in online and in the mail. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, um, sometimes just gives me a, uh, just like this overwhelming sense of, wow, the people of God are really, even though we can't gather here, are staying faithful to the work yeah, of God. Thank you so much. So Pastor Ruben, would you just ask the Lord's blessing? Absolutely. On Absolutely. everybody as they prepare to give. Yeah. Father, thank you so much that we have the opportunity to gather, even if it doesn't look like the way that we're used to, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you so much that you have provided for us. The funds that we have are, are yours, God. And in this moment, you only ask for that 10%, that tithe, God. And, it, and, and right now, what we want to do is be able to say, I'm going to worship you with this money, God. Yes, God. God, would you use the, these gifts, would you use this tithe to further your kingdom? so more and more people can be impacted by the message of Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus.
We love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in your powerful and holy name. Amen. The Lord bless you as you worship with your giving now. Well, welcome back, friends. Let me say again, I'm so glad that you're able to be with us today and that we're able to connect. This is the eighth week of services online, and uh, I hope you're not going stir crazy yet. Uh, but you know what? Church has never been shut down. We may have stopped the large gatherings, but you can't stop the church of Jesus Christ. You know, I know a lot of times we say we're going to go to church or we're going to have church, but you know what? The church has never been about buildings. For the first 300 years of the New Testament, there were no church buildings because the early church understood that they were the body of Christ. They were the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, the body of Christ. And that may not sound like an exciting subject, but please stay with me and track with me because God put this message on my heart to bring to you today about the body of Christ. And if there was ever a time that we needed to understand who the church is and what the church is and the function of the church, it's right now. I mean, all of our life, all we've ever known was coming inside a building and say, that's the church. And we see beautiful buildings and tall spires and stained glass and statues. And we think that's the holy place. That's the church. And then it gets shut down and it can kind of confuse us. Well, what is the church? And I'm just so glad to be able to share this with you today as, as the Lord has put this on my heart about the body of Christ. And I want to give you three words to begin the message. Formed, filled, function. If you can, say those with me, okay, while you're there on your couch or at your kitchen table looking at your laptop. Formed, filled, function. To better understand the body of Christ, I want to take you back to creation. You may say, what's that got to do with anything? Oh, it has everything to do with it. God does everything on purpose, with purpose, for purpose. In creation, if you remember, just the very first day, God said, let there be light. The evening and the morning were the first day. Everything God created from the first day to the fifth, he spoke into existence. But when it came to man on the sixth day, God did not speak Adam into existence. God formed him. Man was the first thing God touched in creation. Think about it. God put his hand on Adam. The first thing God ever touched in creation was Adam, and he formed Adam. <laughs> and then he filled Adam. He filled Adam with the breath of God. Remember, I want you to remember this. Everything God forms, he fills. So he forms Adam, and then the Bible says he breathed. The breath of God came into the nostrils of Adam, and Adam became a living soul. Adam was filled with the breath of God, the first human body. And we're going to get to the body of Christ in just a moment. But Adam, the first body was formed by the hand of God, filled with the breath of God. And then God gave Adam a function, formed, filled, function. And Adam's function was to rule over creation or to take care of the rest of God's creation. And it's also interesting to note that God did not create Adam to function alone. None of us are ever created to function alone, even in the body of Christ. So he causes a deep sleep to come on Adam, takes a rib, you know the story, and he creates Eve. And when Adam wakes up, I don't know about you, but he, when he sees Eve in all of, his, all of her glory, he just had to say, a -bidee, a -bidee, a -bidee. <laughs> you know, wow. But God knew that Adam couldn't function to his full capacity all by himself. So he gave Adam Eve that they might function together. Could I remind you that none of us function well alone? This now begins to give us a picture of the body of Christ. So I got to take you now fast forward to the New Testament. Remember, formed, filled, and function. So when did the body of Christ come into existence? On the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, God formed the church. And now God forms the church one believer at a time. 
and adds them to his body to which he is the head. Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. Now, Peter got done preaching the sermon on the day of Pentecost. Everybody said, what do we do to be saved? He said, repent, be baptized every one of you, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I've got to share this with you. Whenever a person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, they are formed into a new creation. God forms them into a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you know the verse. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, all things became, become new. And I got to think, as God put his hands on Adam, when he saved you, when he saved me, he put his hands. God Almighty, the Most High, put his hand on your life. Oh, not literally, but figuratively speaking. The Holy Spirit touched your heart and my heart. He forgave our sins. He healed our broken heart. He took away our guilt and he released us from the bondage of sin. When God forms you, he puts his hand on your life. And that is one of the most amazing things you'll ever know. Out of darkness and into light, out of bondage and into freedom, God, like he formed Adam and breathed into him, Adam became physically alive. But when God forms us into a new creation, remember, whatever he forms, he fills. Also on the day of Pentecost, he filled them with the Holy Spirit. And as Adam, by the breath of God, came physically alive, we, by the breath of God or the Holy Spirit, become spiritually alive. You can say amen right there on your couch. Remember, whatever God forms, he fills. He forms us. He makes us a new creation. But he doesn't not leave us empty. Our old life was empty. Now he fills us with the Holy Spirit. What an amazing truth, everybody. So watch this, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Oh, it's not the cathedrals with the spires and the stained glass. No, 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 no. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am the temple. So if this temple or this house, this building, church building, never reopened. God has a temple. Thousands, millions of them with where his spirit resides. There's another verse, Acts 7, 48. The Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. You can't jam God up in brick and mortar. No, 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 no. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the body of Christ formed into a new creation, filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? In order that we may function as the body of Christ. How does the body of Christ function? Could I just share this with you? Man, I'll tell you what. When I wrote this down earlier, I almost jumped out of my chair. Do you know that we have the same Holy Spirit that they had in the New Testament? And I'd just like to present this to you today, that if there is no difference in the filling there should be no difference in the function. Let that sink in. If there's no difference in the filling and we have the same Holy Spirit that they were filled with in the New Testament, there should be no difference in the function. How did the New Testament function? They went everywhere, sharing the love of Jesus and the message of Jesus. They went out and healed the sick. They laid hands on sick people. They recovered. They comforted the broken and the grieving. They loved people. The Jews loved Gentiles. Oh, we ought to function. The same Holy Spirit in us ought to make us function like they did. Jews loved Gentiles. And today, oh, there are no racial barriers in the kingdom of God. No, no, we ought to function like they did. And the white man loves the black man. And the black man loves the brown man. And the brown man loves the yellow man. There are no barriers in the body of Christ. Listen, everyone, if there is no difference in the filling, there must be no difference in the function. Let's us, even though we may not be coming into this building, let's share the love of Jesus like they did, the message of Jesus like they did. Lay hands on people like they did. See the brokenhearted healed like they did. The lost found like they did. Miracles happen like they did. Oh, if the filling is the same, the function ought to be the same as well. 
Now, in order to function properly, we need each other. I don't know how... (sighs) After eight weeks of being quarantined, I think we realize how much we need each other. And we need each other more now than ever before. Could I share this with you? 59 times in the New Testament, the words one another are used. I think God's trying to tell us something. I think he's trying to tell us that this Christian life never has been, never should be a solo act. Now, I'm not going to read all 59. (laughs) Say thank God for that. I'm not going to read all 59, but I'd like to share a few with you. The Bible says, love one another, be at peace with one another, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves, stop passing judgment on one another, accept one another just as Christ accepted you, greet one another with a holy kiss. I don't know about that one. (laughs) I had to look at the camera manager for a minute there. Uh, I don't know about that one, but... uh, Serve one another in brotherly love. Bear one another's burdens. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive one another. Teach one another. Encourage one another. Confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Love one another deeply from the heart. I love this one. Care for one another. It says in in 1 Corinthians that the body, listen to this please, The body should have the same care one for another. I don't know why the church got off track a long time ago and we've hired the paid professional and many churches have a a pastor on staff called the pastor of pastoral care. I got to tell you, I don't see the word pastoral care anywhere in here. That doesn't mean pastors don't care for the people. But I don't believe it was ever God's intention for a paid professional to care for the whole church. It's the body of Christ. How do we function? We care for one another. And you know, I'm so excited as we get ready to launch our life groups next week. We're going to do all of the above. And there's more. I didn't read all 59. We're going to encourage one another. We're going to get on that Zoom call. And we're going to be able to encourage one another. Teach one another. We're going to be able to share one another's burdens. I'll tell you this. I've said it before. Whenever you share a joy, it's doubled. Whenever you share a burden. It's cut in half. When we get together, even though it's not physically, but on a Zoom call, we're going to encourage one another, love one another, pray for one another, teach one another, bear one another's burdens. I'm going to say this boldly in case you're thinking, well, I don't know if that's for me. You need what someone else has to offer you. And someone else needs what you have to offer. Maybe an experience you've been through. You can help somebody else that's going through the same funk that you've been through and God brought you out of. And now maybe you need to hear someone else's situation um, that can be an encouragement to your situation. Care for one another. Love one. This is the body of Christ and how we function. Ephesians 4, 15 to 17 uh, says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together. Oh, I love that. I should have read that one, knit together. By what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. It causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I love that. I love that. When it says every joint That's connection. Yeah, that's connection. Joints are connected. It's so important, more than ever before in this COVID-19 crisis, that we are connected, even if it's virtual. And then where it says, the effect of working by every part, that's function. It says, every part does its share. Every part of the body does its share. I'll tell you right now, the body works best when all parts are functioning. The body works best when the kidneys are functioning. The body works best when the eyes function. The body works best when the ears function. The body works best when the feet function, when the heart, the lungs, when every part functions, the body works the best. Pastor Johnny just read the scripture and and, and 
emphasize that not one part is greater than the other. And the eye can never say to the ear, I don't need you because you're not me. Every one of us have a part to play and you cannot, I say this with all due love and respect, you cannot sit back and watch me function and you cannot sit back and watch others function. God has a part for you to play. <laughs> this is probably one of the greatest church growth seminars you could ever find. Uh, when every part does its share, you want to <laughs> see the church grow? When every part does its share, it causes growth of the body. <laughs> I think a lot of churches don't grow because everybody's watching the preacher function. But when every, oh, there's a word from God. When every part, every part of the body functions, wow church explodes how good is God Romans 12 4 for as in one body we have many members and the members do not all have the same function so we though many are one body in Christ and I love the last part and individually members of one another could you just let that marinate in your soul right now that we're members of one another can I go back to Adam and Eve when Adam saw Eve he says now you because of the rib that God took from his body and made Eve. He said, you are bone of my bone and you are flesh of my flesh. God is so awesome and supernatural. We're, could I say that we're not a bunch of individual members in the body of Christ, but we are interconnected like Adam and Eve were. I am part of you. You are part of me because we all have been baptized into the one spirit of the living God. We cannot function independently of one another. We just can't. Uh, you can exist alone, but you cannot function alone. God never intended for this Christian life to be a solo act. We need each other because life is tough. And just like Adam needed Eve in order to function at the level God intended, you and I need one another to function at the level God intended for us to function. We're way past time saying things like, I don't need nobody. Uh, I don't need church folk. I can worship by myself. Uh, I don't need anybody. We're way past that. Let me ask you a question. If you're driving down the road and you see one sheep standing all by itself out in the field, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'll tell you the first thing that comes to my mind. Where's the rest of them? Where's the flock? Sheep were never meant to function alone. They were meant to function in a flock. And if there was ever a time, we need to understand this. The body of Christ, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, interconnected. Like the, <laughs> I don't want to get, remember the knee bone connected to the <laughs> shin bone and the shin bone connected to the ankle. The body, this human body that God formed, Adam, is interconnected. And it functions best when every part is functioning. There's never been a greater time than right now to understand the body of Christ. We were formed into a new creation filled with his Holy Spirit in order to function. And if the filling of the Holy Spirit is the same as it was in the New Testament, then our function ought to be the same as the New Testament. And we must understand the one and others of the scriptures. I'm going to close with this. Um, I love Psalm 133. It's not there on your screen because uh, I just want to share. The Bible says in Psalm 133, talking about unity, it says uh, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers, brethren, brothers dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commands the blessing. <laughs> I love that. What, what's, what's that mean? If you want the blessing, you got to have the connection. How good, how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity for there the Lord commands the blessing. If we want the blessing, we must not miss the connection. If there's anything I want to get across to you today, there in your living room, sitting on your couch, in this message in my heart, is how important it is to understand the body of Christ and how it functions and how important it is to be connected to one another. We're going to, you heard Pastor Ruben say that on Wednesday on our website, all the life groups are going to be listed. You'll be able to, to connect. Could I share this with you right now when, when we're 
filming this right now, there are 91 life groups. If you heard me a couple of weeks ago, God put on my heart, and I did not pull some number out of thin air, God put on my heart 100 life group leaders. We're at 91 right now. And there's still time. And if you're sitting there at home thinking, you know what, I was thinking about it, but I, the body works best when every part functions. Everybody can't be a leader, and I don't think everyone should be. But if God is moving on you, there is still time. In fact, tomorrow night, Monday, Pastor Ruben is gonna hold another training. There's still time. Everybody will watch the message. You'll get a copy of the preacher's notes, mine or whoever's preaching. You'll get some discussion questions. You can send that, those notes out to the people on your Zoom call, and we're going to really Zoom in. That's kind of cool. Zoom in. Zoom group. Zoom in. Um, on the I am statements of Jesus. There's never been a more strategic time for the body of Christ to stay connected. There the Lord commands the blessing. You know, in a moment, I'm going to pitch it to Pastor David and the team. They're going to close with a worship song. But today, if, you're, if you've never been formed into a new creation and you feel lost or you kind of feel like that sheep out in the middle of the field lost, God is ready, if you're ready, to form you into a new creation. And when he forms you, he fills you with his spirit. And he will cause you to function so your life has a whole new meaning and a whole new purpose. While David and the team sing this worship song, I'd like to invite you to do what they did in that first uh, sermon preached on the day of Pentecost. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ and you watch God make everything new. Worship with David and the team.
I sure do love that song. Chains fall, fear bows, here, now. Jesus, you change everything. I'll tell you what, friends. None of us can change where we've been or our past thought patterns, but we can sure change today and where we're going into the future. I'm so glad that you're part of the body of Christ. And if you just prayed to receive Christ, Right now, Jesus changes everything. So before we go, it's just my great joy to pray for you uh, before we meet again next week. And if we could just bow wherever you're at and just quiet our hearts, it's my heart as your pastor to pray for you. Father, I thank you for your presence in our life. I thank you that you have formed us into a whole new creation. I thank you that you've filled us with your spirit. And you've caused us to function as a family, as the body of Christ. I pray that the truth of your word today, Father, will sink into everyone's heart. And for those today who are struggling, uh, may be fearful, things are uncertain. I pray that they would feel you near to them today, Lord God. I pray that your peace would quiet their worries and their fears and their anxieties. I pray that the joy of Jesus, the joy of the Lord, would be their strength. I ask you, Lord, that the love of God and the grace of Jesus and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with each one until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time.